Live from our Tasmanian headquarters, this is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone, those stories for you shortly, but first tonight, a man has died in a truck crash on Cuckoo Hill Road south of Ringaruma this afternoon. Emergency services were called to the scene around 1pm with the Westpac rescue helicopter also tasked but later stood down. WorkSafe Tasmania and transport inspectors are investigating. A report will be prepared for the coroner. Fed up, Tasmanian nurses have launched their own industrial action, fearing they can no longer provide adequate care to patients due to bed block and increasing emergency department demands. They say more beds are urgently needed, but the government claims it's already working to improve the situation. Tasmanian nurses taking matters into their own hands. At the moment we're just... Uh, really struggling to be honest. Since August 2016 Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation members have been calling for action. The pressure now getting unbearable for some. The major concern relates to a lack of inpatient beds and what that means for members in the emergency department is that uh, they're seeing overcrowding in the waiting room, um, ramped ambulances. That's heartbreaking really like I'm spending a lot of my shift and I know a lot of my colleagues apologising to people for the care that we're giving them and their family members and it is it is tragic and and something has to happen. Last year the state government permanently opened 12 beds on the Launceston General Hospital's Ward 4D. That relieved some of the ED's pressure but according to nurses not all. Our members are calling for our opening and staffing of additional beds on Ward 4D at the LGH. They're calling for opening and staffing of beds in the intensive care unit at the LGH. Current Health Minister Michael Ferguson says the Liberals have already agreed to what unions are asking for. He says planning will begin soon on developing a new ward for the LGH and on opening 40 new beds. He's now questioning whether the industrial action is just a smokescreen for the group's wages campaign. We know that nurses and midwives are likely to be the worst paid in the nation. The industrial action will officially begin tomorrow morning. ANMF members will be handing out postcards to patients with the slogan, Bring Your Own Bed. All signed postcards will then be sent to the Health Minister requesting immediate action. We can make this hospital run really well if we're given the opportunity, but at the moment the emergency department, it's not running as an emergency department, it's running as a ward. And we're, people are flowing in but no one's flowing out. We just need those beds upstairs to be opened so we can do our job. Monika Dadsen at Southern Cross News. Staff at the Royal Hobart Showgrounds are desperate for assistance to keep up with a growing homeless population. Security and caseworkers have been requested to keep the site safe for families with the situation approaching breaking point. An emergency call made to police this afternoon highlighting a need for further security. The man running Hobart's makeshift social housing site desperate for assistance as thieves cause issues. The tent's not a very secure place. Uh, people here have to either stay with their tent or get somebody to look after it when they leave. A dozen homeless people have been staying at the grounds but some have since fled following unfavourable weather. For Awina Warby it's the only option as she waits for social housing. The reason we're here is because we're sick of couch surfing. Being in other people's homes all the time you feel like a burden and then you've got your animal, say so my dog Jagger. Um, nobody wants to rent to anybody with pets anymore. Rowena and her partner were lent their tent, luckily not damaged by the weather. She's questioning why there's no immediate action to improve the situation. You know, all these burnt out homes and all these homes that could be fixed and have families running around in the front yards, but th things just seem to be left um, derelict and they move on to something else. This is not a good place for people to be, I keep saying that. You know, have a look behind me, that's one night. Um, and there's not an endless supply of tents, so we, we really need somewhere else. A GoFundMe page has raised more than $3,000 in hopes of providing caravans for people. The government maintaining new crisis beds are due to come online soon. I can't go on forever, and the safety factor may mean that as the weather turns, I will need to close the site. They're not asking the world, they're asking for some assistance to improve security and perhaps some assistance with social work and other support to help transition some of these people to more suitable housing. Hope's fading but not lost for Rowena. We believe in ourselves. 
yeah, and we believe in, in, in the people in society that come up and just drop a bag of groceries off at the door or some dog food for Jagger. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. All elected members of Tasmania's lower house have now been officially announced, with the final declaration of the poll ceremony today. Members of the Denison and Franklin electorates were congratulated as they prepare for the first day of Parliament in May, which some believe isn't soon enough. Parliament returns on the 1st of May, which I must say, Premier, is a long time from the election. Um, and it's actually almost two months since election day that we will return to Parliament, and I think that's an unduly long period of time. The Premier is now determining his new look cabinet with some fresh faces in the team. The ministerial reshuffle is expected to be announced as early as tomorrow. A truck driver has had a lucky escape after becoming trapped under his vehicle near Buckland yesterday afternoon. The incident occurred on private property where police believe the truck lost control in the wet weather, hitting a bank and rolling onto its roof. It took emergency crews two hours to cut the 66-year-old from the wreckage. He was airlifted to the Royal Hobart Hospital but avoided serious injury. A 17-year-old youth has been charged and a 15-year-old is in a serious condition following a single vehicle crash in Devonport this morning. Emergency services attended the collision on Don Road at around 2am. The youngest boy was taken to the Northwest Regional Hospital but is in a serious but stable condition. Police have since charged the 17-year-old with two counts of motor vehicle stealing, driving unlicensed and negligent driving. Wild weather continued to lash the state today, bringing down trees and causing around 3,000 Tasmanians to lose power. The powerful wind and rain we've experienced over the past two days is a result of two cold fronts. The Bureau of Meteorology recorded wind gusts of 98 kilometres per hour in Hobart this morning, 91 in Launceston and Devonport and 130 kilometres per hour on Mount Wellington. The wild weather is expected to ease tonight before another cold front hits next weekend. Tasmania's general practitioners will soon be better equipped to treat those living with dementia. The Dementia Care Training and Education Program is available online and aims to improve the awareness, management and diagnosis of the disease. They might actually present by having missed a couple of appointments and that might alert the GP to the fact that there could be some sort of cognitive issue involved. It's estimated around 250 people are diagnosed with dementia in Australia each day. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed slightly higher, helped by positive leads from US and European markets. The ASX 200 index has risen by 10 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 77 US cents and 81.32 Japanese yen. And all eyes are set to be fixed on the two northern clubs during the opening TSL rounds, with the sides tipped as the early flag favourites. We recently caught up with the clubs to find out if all the hype is justified. The Blues pushed deeper into the 2017 final series than anyone expected, but we may have only seen the side scratching the surface of its potential. But then when you've got someone like a Dylan Riley can float through the mid, through the back, pinch hit, then a Thorpey up forward. Um, they're just some older guys, but some new young guys that have come to the club, like uh, young Jack Rushton. After enticing several big-name recruits to the club in the off-season, the Blues will find out just how warranted the early flag favouritism is when they take on reigning Premier's North Launceston in Round 1. As an older player now, I don't mind it. Uh, if people want to talk, they can talk. Um, same thing, like I said, we know where we want to be, so if people want to put us here on the pedestal, it is what it is. We've been training since November, three nights a week, a couple of weeks off over Christmas, so all the boys are raring to go. You can even see it throughout the practice matches so far. The Bombers head into the season under a new coach in flag-winning captain Taylor Whitford, who will hope to emulate the success of predecessors Zane Littlejohn and Tom Couch. He's brought in his own style, which is really good. Um, it's what you want. You don't want him to just follow in the footsteps. So. He stepped out and made his own game style. The captain quickly brushing aside suggestions of a premiership hangover. With the bulk of the senior group back on board, Bar star midfielder Jay Lockhart, who will try his luck in the VFL. Once you've had that feeling, it's contagious and you really want it again. So we've had no problems with um, the drive and the want to keep succeeding. The Crosstown grudge match begins on Good Friday. 
Hobart Chargers coach Anthony Stewart has labelled this year's playing group as potentially stronger than 2017's, which was touted as the best in the club's history. While the women's side have welcomed back a familiar face into the fray who could prove the difference this Siebel season. After struggling to retain last year's imports, the Chargers were forced to recruit heavily during the off-season, but Stewart says fans will be satisfied with the end result. It'll be very exciting to watch them play. Uh, we've got a tough run early, so um, yeah, we'll know after round four or five where we sit. Mathang Muo is one star who opted to return, with the coach hoping he gels instantly with new point guard import Trey Nichols and forward Craig Moller, who's currently playing for Melbourne United in the NBL final series. Once Craig arrives as well from his NBL duties, um, I'm quietly confident we've got a, a, as good or not even better team than last year. While former Charger Clara Wisher has returned, having spent two seasons out west with WNBL side Perth Lynx before a stint in the State Basketball League. After an injury interrupted pre-season, the small Ford is hoping to be fit for the side's round one clash with Kilsyth at home on April 6. I'm a more confident player in person and I've had a bit more experience um, over there and with the National League. So. Yeah, I think that um, yeah, it has definitely helped my basketball. To soccer and the Zebras are still flying high following their 5-3 opening round win over reigning NPL champ South Hobart, with the club's new imports making an immediate impact. I mean, if we can go out there and score five goals every week, um, I mean, I think we're going to have a put together a nice little season here. Um, and I think we'll only get better as the season goes on. They take on the Northern Rangers this weekend, who will look to bounce back after a disappointing three-goal loss to Olympia. We're going to work on a lot of defensive structures and um, try and get the guys defending a lot quicker and in the right areas. Tasmania's most promising young Groms have battled out on the South Arm today for the Tasmanian Schools Championships, with around 200 students competing in clean two to three foot swell at Clifton Beach. We've got some of the best uh, juniors in Tasmania competing today um, from right across the, the state um, and they're doing a fantastic job and we're lucky to have uh, great conditions. The event is now in its 30th year with today's winners in line for selection at the National Surfing Championships in South Australia later this year. Good evening. Hobart, Launceston and Devonport 21 today, Bernie 19. Strong gusty winds from the west are reluctant to leave but the good news is the temperatures still aren't too chilly yet. Flinders Island and St Helens 20 today, King Island, Ooze and Lowhead 19, Smithton 18, Grove 17 and Liawini hanging in there on a 13. The state's high was 24 at Friendly Beach. Beaches. On the satellite, widespread low-level convective cloud associated with a cooler air mass moving over the state from the west. Nationwide, a cold front is sitting near our east coast and will continue moving towards the Tasman Sea. Tropical cyclone Marcus has a distinct eye and now lies to the north of Broome. The rest of the country looking mostly cloud-free. Cloud Tomorrow, we've got a high ridging into the Bass Strait and central Australia, along with a trough bringing some cool attempts from the top end through western Queensland and northeast New South Wales. On the water, west to southwesterly winds to 35 knots, with seas about the west and south reaching 6 metres in the evening. A gale warning is still current for southern coastal waters, a strong wind warning current for lower eastern and western coastal waters, a strong wind warning current for Storm Bay and Frederick Henry and Norfolk Bays, also a small craft wind alert current for the south, west and central Plateau Lakes, and a minor flood warning current for the Huon River. Tomorrow, showers expected for Hobart 16, Adventure Bay 15, Taralea 12. Cloudy across the north with Launceston, Devonport and Bridport running a tie on 18. Partly cloudy in Burnie 18, Maribor 17 and Strawn 15. St Helens and Whitemark cloudy and maxing at 18, Swansea 17. UV is medium with sixes all round. Looking ahead to the three day forecast, Wednesday light showers for the north and east coast fine elsewhere. Thursday showers again for the north and east fine elsewhere and Friday Friday showers across the north and east with some cool fresh northeasterlies arriving on the east coast but a gorgeous looking day in Strawn with a 23 the forecast there and taking the cam across the land tomorrow Perth 34 Adelaide cloudy 23 Melbourne some early showers 19 Sydney 27 have dropped in Hobart 13 and cloudy right now, Launceston 18 mostly clear, Devonport 17 mostly clear the wind should be easing a little bit more tomorrow thanks Joe. Lovely, thank you very much for that Candice. And before we leave you tonight, Tassie Devils aren't exactly known for their climbing ability, but that didn't stop Blizzard the Joey from giving it a go. The little one wasn't really equipped for the slippery conditions, letting off a bit of a frustrated growl. 
most of the way down, he eventually called it a day. And fair enough. That's all from the team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you with updates throughout the evening. Bye-bye.